UC San Diego biologist Ethan Beer says it was the coolest thing he's ever seen happen in his lab. I, I, it's, I was speechless. It's hard to articulate the degree of surprise. The jaw-dropping result? It was nothing more than a bunch of yellow fruit flies. Yellow is somewhat rare in fruit flies. It's kind of like blonde hair in humans. People need two copies of a gene, one from mom and one from dad, to actually have blonde hair. It works the same way in fruit flies. Which, if you have uh, two mutant copies of it, you have yellow flies. But if you have only one mutant copy of it and one normal copy of it, you have the dark um, pigmentation. That's why Beer was shocked when his grad student, Valentino Gantz, came up with a way to ensure every fly born in his lab came out yellow. Gantz was using a relatively new tool called CRISPR to precisely insert the yellow gene into a fly's DNA. He made sure that gene copied itself onto both chromosomes, guaranteeing a yellow fly. But the modified yellow gene didn't stop there. It also copied itself in offspring, setting off a chain reaction. When this gets passed on to the progeny, it happens again. All the babies born from this engineered fly also turned yellow, and so did all their babies. By modifying one single fly, the researchers could turn every fly in their lab yellow within 10 generations, just a few weeks. It determines the genetic um, uh, characteristics of all of their descendants. They are all going to be the same, which is, you know, whoa. If you're scratching your head right now thinking, so what, they turned a bunch of flies yellow, big deal. You should hear how UC Irvine malaria expert Anthony James reacted when Ethan Beer first showed him these results. He sent me the data and I looked at the data and I wrote back and I said, you know, that's what we've been looking for and working on and this looks really, really good. Mosquito-borne malaria kills 600,000 people every year, but James has discovered ways to genetically engineer malaria out of mosquitoes. The problem is he can't go around modifying every mosquito in the world by hand. What we need then is something that would move these genes into um, uh, field insects or, or wild mosquitoes. If this chain reaction can spread genes through mosquitoes as efficiently as it does in fruit flies, James says it could be a game changer for countries devastated by malaria. But the technique will not be used in the field anytime soon. For now, scientists say it should stay confined within highly secure labs like this one. So this is a double door. This one won't open until this one is closed. The UC San Diego researchers had to keep their flies in carefully sealed boxes, locked behind a series of heavy doors. The facility they used was so secure, KPBS was not allowed inside. But UC Irvine arranged to show us their lab. These were also designed uh, so that we could have infected mosquitoes in here. And so that's the same facilities they have down in uh, San Diego. Let's say one fly had escaped. The worst that could have happened was a takeover of yellow flies in San Diego. But even that would have been unacceptable, according to Harvard geneticist George Church. He says, think about genetically modified crops. Many people already distrust GMOs in their food, even after extensive regulation. Imagine the reaction of an unscheduled, unapproved release of an aggressively spreading GMO that flies doesn't sit still like a plant. Church's preferred method of spreading genes includes safeguards to prevent modified genes from surviving outside the lab. He says the UC San Diego researchers failed to take that precaution. Ethan Beer agrees that safety is a huge concern. I do believe that the positive um, applications of this technology are numerous and will have real impact on human welfare. And I think that those benefits greatly outweigh the risks. Beer says the domino effect this technique could create would be profound. Scientists just have to set up the dominoes carefully before tipping one over. David Wagner, KPBS News.